The play Mothers and Tigers is a story about Korean women. It is based on interviews with over a hundred Korean women conducted over a two-year period. Meet American playwright Will Kern and his latest play, Mothers and Tigers. Hello and welcome. I'm An Jung Hyun for Heart to Heart. My guest today has made Korea his second home, and he even has a Korean name, uh, which is Il Kon. He's an American playwright now based and working here in Korea. Let's meet Will Kern. Great to meet you. Hi. <laughs> you don't have to look so stiff. <laughs> I don't. I'm just trying to hide my fat. Right. So. Now, let's talk about your Korean name, Il Kon, which sounds very much like your American name, Will Kern. Who gave you that name? Uh, Lee Sang-woo, who's the man who translated my show, uh, gave me that name. Aha, uh -huh. translated your play, yes. Mothers and Tigers, right. which we will talk about today. So, uh, usually Korean names have a certain meaning. What does your name uh, I think the meaning mean? is that it sounds like Will Kern. Okay. So that's that's <laughs> basically right. what the meaning mm -hmm. is. It's, it's close. Mm. So. Now, before Mothers and Tigers, you worked in Chicago as a playwright, and your most representative work is called Hellcap. That's right. Mm. This was actually one of the longest-running shows in Chicago, which ran for nine years. Nine years, years yes. Right. What is it about? Uh, it's about a taxi driver who has a really bad day a couple of days before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Before Christmas. Yeah, it's uh -huh. actually a Christmas story, but because Chicago is a really big cab town, it's... Uh, it was a, a, a story that, uh, that uh, just sort of took off on its own. They mm -hmm. couldn't close it because people just kept coming. So. What kind of a bad day was he having? Well, he just, gets, he just picks up a lot of really uh, terrible passengers, and there's a lot of terrible things that happen to him. Uh -huh. Does it have a Charles Dickens Christmas Carol kind of ending? No, no? not really. It doesn't have, well, there's no ghosts in it or anything. He, he does have something of an, of an epiphany at the end. At the end. Um, he picks a, and this actually happened to me. Uh, um, um, I, uh, when I was a, a, a cab driver, I had picked up a woman that had been uh, had been raped, mm. and uh, um, she was really distraught. And and um, um, the po she had called the police, but the police wouldn't take her to the hospital. And so she got in my car, and she was she was crying, and she felt, right after she was raped. Yeah, you right picked after her up. She, uh -huh. yeah. And uh -huh. the, she had the police report in her hand, and. Uh, it, it 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 really affected me deeply. It it it, it really touched me, and and um, I think it was one of the things that made me really want to go out and, and and write the story. But that was that's sort of the, the 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 climax of the play because after that, it's the 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 cab driver meets this um, this architect, who sort of helps him get through the, the the sorrow, and then he has he he has this epiphany about Christmas and about how the that you know we're you know, the only thing that we can do is love each other and, and, uh, and be here for each other, mm -hmm. so. It was made into a movie as well. Yes. Yeah, um, s starring some big names. Yes, it was made into a movie with John Cusack and Gillian Anderson and Julianne Moore and, and you know, a lot of other things. Yeah, well, what do you think it is about Hellcab that uh, made it so popular? Well, I think, in, I think it's, it's, a, it's actually it's very sentimental. It's a, it's a sentimental play. It's really funny. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, it's dark, but it's not dark like, you know, you would think that a story like that could be. Mm. Uh, and I, I think it, it, it appeals yeah. to people because it, it, it communicates. Also, there's a, there's a thing about, about having this character who's, who's sort of like a sad sack, and, and there's a lot of terrible things that happen to him, and, and I mean, there's, there's comedy in, in, in people's misery, you know, and, and he was having this really miserable day. He's, He's a likable guy that's having a really miserable day, miserable day, and you know we just empathize for him, and 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 we want to follow him, and we, we want to see him, you know, have something happen that'll that'll be good for him. Oh, we end. can all relate to his story because we have miserable days once in a while ourselves, right? Right, uh, right. Now, what uh, does a successful playwright uh, do here in Korea? Well, you know, it's funny. I'm not. It, it, 
Playwriting is, is, kind of a, is kind of an odd career. For me, I, I, I made my living at it for about nine years while the play was actually running. But then when the play closed, then suddenly I wasn't making my living at it mm -hmm. anymore, and so I had to do something else. Um, I taught English as a second language in, in uh, Los Angeles for about uh, three years. Um, I moved here. Uh, I was teaching here, and then I, I, uh, I met this, this woman mm -hmm. um, on... Uh, uh, a, a, a Korean dating website called koreancupid.com. Mm -hmm. You can edit it that <laughs> unless you want him to pay for it. And uh, uh, she was a really good storyteller. She, she told a lot of really good stories, and, and uh, I thought, wow, maybe, maybe this would, would make a really good play. And so then I, I, I got this idea that, that maybe I should start collecting stories and see if there was some way that maybe this couldn't be put into, uh, into a, uh, a full-length play. Uh -huh. So it's, it's interesting because you say you're inspired to write Hellcat because you picked up this woman who had just been raped. And this time around, too, you met this woman online, and her story inspired you to go out and collect more stories, which ended up becoming the play Mother, the Mothers and Tigers. So I guess you draw a lot of inspiration from women. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it that yeah. way. Hmm. No, I, it just occurred to me as you were talking about the, uh, the, 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 the passenger that you picked up as a cab driver in Chicago. But anyway, um, well, yes. I, I think there's a, there's a similarity because the, the woman who told me that her original story uh, had told me a story about uh, when she was a child, mm -hmm. when, actually when she, was a, when she was an infant, and how her mother had given her this box of matches to play with because the, as an infant she was being fussy and, and her mother wanted to watch, watch the dishes so she gave her this box of matches and then the mother went into the other room and then she started playing with the matches and of course the next thing that happened was she took the matches out and uh -huh. struck the matches and burned her hands up uh -huh. and so for the next 12 years it was this process of going to the doctor and getting skin grafts until she was she was able to actually open up her hands like mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. and, and the dynamic was interesting because she was telling me about about her family living with her grandmother and her mother and her father and the relationship that they all had also there was a there was a a, a daughter that she had too mm -hmm. she, this this woman had also had a daughter out of a, a out of a marriage and uh you know, it just it just struck me as as this woman that was going through this process, and and it was a great story. Mm. It was it was a great story, and and I thought, wow, you know, if 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 Korean women can tell stories like this, then then I really got something here. So, what does a play do? Does a play tell these stories? Well, originally it was it was set up. I wanted to do something that that was a series of stories where actresses would come out on stage and they they would tell a monologue. So mm -hmm. it'd be like monologue, 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 monologue. But I had a, a staged reading of the play in Chicago, and and uh, the the feedback that I got from from that was that it was a lot more interesting when there was actually things going on because well, there was one scene in there where there was two characters that were talking back and forth and they said that that was the more interesting scene so mm. so i decided that 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 i thought well how can i how can i how can i tell these true stories uh in a setting that that's that's true i mean and then i started thinking about the ritual the, the rituals that that koreans do and you know, one of the rituals that, that, that Koreans have is that they have this Kim Jong where the women sit around and they make kimchi and they talk about stuff and they complain about their mother-in-law and they, they talk about their husbands and their children and, you know, all this stuff. And, and well, that's one occasion when women come together, right? right? Just women. Right, exactly. You wanted a setting like that. Yes, mm -hmm. because, I, because I wanted, I wanted the, these women to tell women's stories. So basically what the play is, is it's, it's, a, it's fictional women telling true stories. Mm, true stories that you collected. I have to ask you, have you actually seen a Kim Jong in process? Oh, sure. Kimchi making, yes? Does it happen in your family too? You are married to a Korean I am married to a Korean woman, uh -huh. yes. Does she go home for the Kim Jong session every winter? Uh, no. no, but no. actually they came over to our house and had a Kim Jong. I see, okay. So Pretty you recently, are, You are familiar with what goes on uh, around Kim